it's wrong. Okay. Is, that, is that showing it's recorded? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So let's have uh, the first class for the lab. And then you should have uh, two fact sheets there. One is for microscope use, another one is for simple stamp. Now the work is we make it a little bit easy, which means you're gonna make simple stamp. You have Staphylococcus cox you guys have E. coli, and you have Micrococcus ladius. You do the simple stem and use microscope to do the observation. Okay, so I'm gonna draw on the blackboard a lot of material, then you take the notes and you go ahead to do. Okay, uh, something in the lecture I may repeat it, uh, I may repeat it again. Okay, so the first question. Now we talk about microorganism. <coughs> Okay, what is microorganisms? They are too small to see by naked eye. Therefore, they need a tool for that. What other tool? Which is microscope or microscopy, microscope. Now the microscope, when we talk about the microscope, in here, we are using bright field microscope. But you know there is a dark field. And there is a phase contrast. And there is a, we call fluorescence. Fluorescence microscope and the confocal laser or laser confocal scanning microscope. Okay, now here the thing: these three using light as an energy resource. Fluorescence. If you look at the lecture, this is use UV lights or blue light as an energy resource, and this is use laser as an energy resource. Okay. Then, electron microscope, of course, you use electron, electron being as an energy resource. Therefore, we have SEM, scanning electron microscope, and transmission electron microscope. This is usually look at the surface, so the 3D images for surface, and this is for internal. Okay? And la uh, confocal laser scanning microscope also can see 3D images. Fluorescence, usually we're using for eukaryotes. And we can see the internal structure also. Phase contrast microscope, this is the key, is the phase ring. Because of the phase ring, so the wavelength the speed is either one quarter fast or slow. Then they change the wavelength, therefore you will see the difference. So what happened is, I'm not sure you learned in the physics. If this is, it looks like that, the peak and the bottom overlap, this is will become dark. Okay, and if happens is, uh, these two happens. Uh, actually it should be like this. If the light is like this, this will be light. Okay, let's say this is normal, we won't see anything. Now what happened? You have a phase ring, so the speed, one quarter wavelength is changed, then what's gonna happen? If you have a if, if you have a phase ring, then become this maybe looks like that. Then this one maybe looks like this. So these overlap, there is something that showed up right here. Okay, that's called a phase contrast. Because that's a normal light wavelength going through the condenser, going through the objective lens. Here, the phase will change the speed, which is one quarter wavelength either quick or slow, then that's the morphology changes. The wavelength, the path will change, then you see something here. Okay, very brief. Now, dark field microscope. Dark through the microscope, what happened is, let's say this is a microscope lens. This is a stage. 
this is a larger resource. Now what happened is there is a heavy block underneath the condenser. That's a block. So what happened is the light going here, they go perpendicular. This is 90 degree angle. That's why you will see the specimen is light, then the background is dark. And this is used for a very special bacteria called spirochete, sheet, which is asexual filaments. And the three, uh, three examples for spiral sheets, which is the uh, Borella Bugdo This is for Lyme disease. And the uh, Treponemium plavium. This is for syphilis. Last one, Leptospero interrogan. This is for UI. We call it John Bass. Okay, those are the three we call spare sheets. So we'll mention these in the examination three. So, very briefly, we talk about that. Now we're going to focus on this bright field microscope. What are we really going to talk about? We're going to practice in the lab. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today, about bright field microscope. So regarding the bright field microscope, we want to mention something before we go into talk about uh, the detail, how we're going to do it. Okay, so the first thing is total magnification. What is total magnification? That is calculated by objective lens, the magnification multiple by ocular lens. So for example, objective lens is, is sometimes it's 10x. Ocular lens is always 10x. Then you multiply by them together equals 100x. If objective lens is 100x multiplied by ocular lens 10x equals 1000x. Okay, so that's a very simple uh, testing for the uh, uh, simple calculation for total magnification. Now here is a question. We have four lens. Therefore we have a second thing talking about the walking distance. Okay, we have 4x, 10x, 40x, and 100x. Okay, so what it looks like. 4x, 10x, 40x. That is a hundred x, and this is a stage. Okay, now, first of all, what is walking distance? The distance between the stage to the objective lens, these are called the walking distance. Now, this walking distance, you can see, which is decrease with increasing of a magnification of objective lens. Okay, so you can see the, the distance is decreased. That's called the walking distance. So you will think about this, uh, think about this. You're using 10x to find the specimen. Now, you, you think it's good, okay? Then you transfer to 100x. All of a sudden, you find that the image is not clear at all. 
maybe not as good as even poets. Why? Because there is a refraction happen. That's a third question. We're gonna talk about it. oil inversion. Okay, so what happened is when the light going through the there is a light resource right here. This is glass. This is air, and this is glass again. So what happened is this is glass. This is air, and this is glass. So let's give an example right here. Glass, air, and the glass. And you know that when the light passing through different media, it will be bended, we say refraction. Refraction, or refract. So what happened? When the light is going through here, it will be bended like that. Bend something going through, something will be bended. Okay, this is called, a, called a refraction. Now once the refraction happens, it's not gonna be showing very clear images. Now what we're gonna do? We add one drop of the oil right there. This will be a one large drop of oil. Why? Because the refraction index, we say Ri, of air equals 1.0. Refraction index of glass equals 1.5. And the ref refraction index of oil also equals 1.5. So when you add one drop of the oil, the glass oil and the glass, which is a connected the whole system. Therefore, it's remove air gap. So you will not see any of the refraction. The image is be very clear and it's magnified, okay? Because these are larger than that. Okay, so that's the story for the oil immersion. Remove the air gap to decrease the impact or eliminate the impact of refraction. So that's a third question is oil immersion. Now the fourth, the fourth question, which is we call it RP. What is RP means? Resolution power. Now, resolution power calculated by lambda divided by 2 and Na. That's a formula. It's like a mess. Uh, it's a very difficult, a very a little bit of a complicated story behind that. What is the lambda? The voltage control in here, right now the microscope, if you set at 10 or all the way turn to the largest part, this, this is 250 nanometer. What is AA? That is called numerical aperture. So, if you see the 100x objective lens, you can look at the picture on the fact sheet. You will see 1.25 oil. This is numerical aperture. Numerical aperture, I usually say, is like size of engine. So you have a size of engine of your car. Is that right? 1.5 liter, 2.5, 4.0. That's called the size of the engine. So we can do the calculation. If we use a hundred X objective lens, we can do the calculation, which is 650, divided by two multiplied by 1.25, that equals 650 divided by 2.5 equals 260 nanometer that equals 0 0.26 micrometer. Now, why it is important? This 0 0.26 micrometer will determine how good the microscope is. 
So here is the question. Why we use microscope? Light field microscope can do the observation of staphylococcus aureus. We're going to do right real quick. Because the size of staphylococcus aureus is 0 0.5 micrometer. This is larger than 0 0.26 micrometer. Uh, micrometer of the resolution power. Therefore, we can see it. But can we see a virus? Let's say HIV virus. That's the size is 0 0.01 micrometer. This is smaller than 0 0.26 micrometer of the resolution power. So, we cannot do the observation use light field microscope because the resolution power is larger than the size. So anything which is larger than 0 0.26 micrometer, we can use light field microscope to do the observation. Smaller than that, no, we cannot do it because it cannot differentiate the difference. So what we need to do, we just write and then remove the, what's that? We have to use electron microscope. Okay, so that's the story. Okay, that's number question number four, the resolution power. Now, the next question, what we're going to mention, which is uh, very good characteristics for a light field microscope, which is called a power focal. Okay, how to understand the power focal? Which, mean, uh, which means once it is focused, Objective lens stays stay focused with little adjustment. So what that means, if we are using 10x, we already find the specimen. We transfer to 100x with all your immersion. You only need to do a very little adjustment, which means you don't have to all the way to a stage down, then uh, all of a sudden then if you lose the, lose the focus and you refocus from the beginning, you don't have to do. Because that's a power focal, that is a characteristics of a light field microscope. Once it is focused, the objective lens stays focused. Okay, only a little bit of, uh, Adjustments that means we only need to use fine focus. That is a thin knob which is uh, attached to the arm of the microscope. Okay, so that's uh, question number five. So, this is a microscope. We gave you some introduction, and you can grab a microscope in the closet later on. Then you can see all the structure. And in my fact sheets, there is a description about all the structure so you can read about that now used to be if it's a normal time the first lab is when you look at the learning all these terminology then you will be doing an observation of made the microscope so for example I had a staphylococcus aureus here and I have another one which is a um, Saccharomyces uh, yeast. So you do the observation of both eukaryotes and uh, prokaryotes. But right now, since we are combined the lab section, so we're going to move on to the second step, which is do a simple stand, then use microscope to do the observation. Okay. So the second question we will be talking about is a simple stand. And the next week we will uh, next week we'll talk about the gram stand. So let's talk about simple stand. So what is simple stand? The function of the simple stand is to see shape of bacteria. So the terminology we call it some morphology and the arrangement, the 
the shape of the morphology, that could be coxal. That could be lots. Is that right? Then the arrangement, that could be single. That could be chain. Could be a grape shape. And that could be a tetrade, which means four of them stacked together. Or we say it's a succinate, which is eight, eight of them stacked together. So that's a simple step. Now, first question, why we can do simple step? A bacteria, if they grow, grows 37 degrees Celsius, 24 hour in broth, let's say, give an example. It will be negatively charged. And we can use some of the basic dye. A good example of the basic dye is crystal violet, saffron, um, mason blue, carbon fusion, uh, including malachite green. Those are those basic dye. These basic dye are positively charged. Now, I have a video I already mentioned. That in the exception of methylene blue, this is a very weak positively charged. So unless you have a very good experiences before, so we don't recommend you use methylene blue. So it's a positive charge for these dye, then they attach e e each other. They can be stained. Now, in other way, Bacteria negatively charged. There's some of the dye called the acidic dye. Let's say nigrosine uh, India ink. These are negatively charged. So what happened is they will repel from the objective, but then stand in the background. So this is called negative stain. A negative stain, we're not going to practice in the lab. We uh, give you some example. When you see a, staphylococ a streptococcus ammonia, when you see a diprococcal, you see the slides of the lecture, this is showed up. Then that's capsule. And this inside is a two diprococcal. And the lung set shape. Then the background is dark. So we show that we can see the capsule. That's part of the stem, we call it a capsule stem. So that's using the active stem, okay? Now we're not gonna do this in the lab, we will do just to use a basic stem. So that's why we can do a, a, a simple stem. So how are we gonna do the simple stem? So today, we make it simple for you, since we are doing the simple stem. Everything you do in the lab, make sure you understand one principle, is a label. Before you do anything, is label. So how are we going to label? Using a micro glass slides, the glass slides is on the front bench there. Draw a big circle using the Sharpie marker in your personal tray. Then you're going to label them on the side. What is that? So for example, if it's Staphylococcus aureus, you write SA. If it's E. coli, write EC. If Micrococcus ladius, write ML. Then you have to do is flip it over. This is very important to flip over because the marker will be damaged. The lens, the objective lens. The most expensive tool on the microscope is the lens. That's the most expensive one. So flip it over. Then you're going to add one drop of the water. That will be a large drop. Okay, you have to use a loop. I already showed you how to burn the loop and make sure it's flat. And then you have to burn it, make sure it's red. That's called a sterilization. No bacteria survived. Then you use your loop to pick the bacteria from slugs or from 
uh, plates, other plates. Then you make a big smear. Okay, this smear has to be thin. If it's very thick, you will see it very clearly because we want to see the shape and the morphology. So that has to be seen. Okay, then we're going to add a dye there. So you think about we're going to add a dye directly. No, wait a little bit. We have to do a first two steps. Air dry. Air dry about three to five minutes. Because if you don't do the air dry later on, it will show a lot of the legs on the microscope. Your microscope is low. Under this microscope, you see these, these legs. Anytime when you see the legs, which means you didn't do a complete air dry. You move to the next step called the heat fixing. Heat fixing, which is using faucets, carry on glass slides on the Bunsen burner back and forth. That's called the heat fixing. Once you finish all of these two, then you go to add a dye. Okay, add dyes, you can choose anything from here, except methylene blue. You can try methylene blue if you want. Then we're going to do a stain about 60 seconds. This stage is very important. You have to wear goggles. Okay? To protect your eye. Then, after you add a dye, we will do a very gentle rinse. Then we dry, and underneath microscope, we're using 10x to find the specimen, then transfer to 100x with oil immersion. You will be finding a as finding your morphology and the shape of the bacteria. At this moment, you can draw a picture or either take a picture yourself. That's fine. Then you can record it. Okay? So that is a step for the simple step. So the key thing here, loop has to be flaming, sterilized. Between the drop of water and the uh, carrier bacteria, that, that has to be completely sanitized. Not only sanitized, sterilized. Smear has to be seen. Air dry completely followed by heat fixing. So you add a dye. Okay? So that should be easy to do. Any questions? If no questions, everybody go ahead to get your microscope at the back, then go ahead to do it.